It is midnight in Washington, six in London, and two on a Thursday afternoon here in Seoul. I'm Moon Ganyo. Let's get a check of the main stories we're following at this hour. As Korean lawmakers zero in on ways to overhaul the scandal-ridden National Intelligence Agency, the NIS presents its own reform plan to Parliament. We'll connect live with our National Assembly correspondent for more. The nation's central bank keeps its ben benchmark interest rate unchanged with near 14-year low inflation, giving it room to support a rebound in Asia's fourth biggest economy as a declining yen threatens exports. And President Pakone vows to remove or ease regulations that prevent startups from moving forward as part of government efforts to strengthen support for them. Now, this at a ceremony organized to promote awareness of her creative economy campaign. We'll have those stories and more, but first let us begin this Thursday afternoon at the National Assembly. The Special Parliamentary Committee to Reform the State Spy Agency resumed work this Thursday, and it is currently meeting to discuss a reform plan drafted by the spy agency itself. Well, for more on the meeting today and what's next for the committee, let's now go over to our political correspondent, Kim Yeonji, live at the National Assembly. Hello there, Yeonji. So uh, what is the latest from there? Hi, Gan Young. The Special Parliamentary Committee on Reforming the National Intelligence Service convened a closed-door meeting this morning. National Intelligence Service Chief Nam Jae-jun is at the meeting, and he presented a reform plan that his agency put together. It is the first time lawmakers are hearing the plan, which will bar NIS agents from entering the National Assembly, political parties, and media outlets, which is common practice now. The committee's assistant manager said in a briefing that the reform plan includes the establishment of a center that will collect employee complaints of unjust or inappropriate orders from superiors. Another important element of the plan calls on the agency to clearly define the scope of its psychological warfare campaign against North Korea. NIS agents will also be barred from mentioning specific political parties or politicians when involved in psychological warfare operations. The spy agency has been at the center of a national controversy all year long over suspicions of launching an online smear campaign in the run-up to last year's presidential election. And with allegations against the spy agency growing in size and scope, the agency has faced increasing pressure to reform. Uh, now, Yeonji, uh, this, this meeting was uh, initially slated for earlier this week. Now, why was it delayed? This session was scheduled for Tuesday, but ruling party lawmakers called it off that day in protest against some controversial remarks made by two opposition lawmakers the day before and on Sunday. On Sunday, Democratic Party lawmaker Chang an called last year's presidential election a fraud and demanded a new presidential election be held next June. And the following day, another DP lawmaker, Yang sung joo said that President Park could be at risk of repeating the fate of her father, the late President Park Jong-hee, who was assassinated after exercising dictatorial power over Korea for nearly 18 years if she refuses to listen to the people. All right, now that the committee is back to work, uh, what is next in terms of their reform plan of the uh, state spy agency? Well, now that the committee has resumed work, it will have a lot to do in the coming weeks. Next week, the committee will hold public hearings to gather experts' views on how to reform the spy agency and that it will start deliberations on how the National Intelligence Service law and a law on public officials should be revised in order to carry out the necessary reforms. The special committee has about three weeks to complete all of the legislative work necessary to reform the spy agency in the way that it sees fit. All right, thank you, Yeonji, for that report. That was our parliamentary correspondent, Kim Yeonji, live from the National Assembly. Now, shifting our focus, President Park Geun-hye has emphasized the importance of her push for a creative economy, saying Korea needs to shift its economic paradigm to meet the needs of the ever-changing world. She also laid out various government measures to support startups and venture companies. Our presidential office correspondent, Oh Jin-ju, has the details. President Peck has pledged to create a business environment in which creativity, innovation and new ideas can lead to economic revitalization. Speaking at a fair on Creative Economy Thursday, President Peck stressed that in order to break away from low growth and high unemployment, the country should shift its economic paradigm to a more creative and innovative one. 
글로벌 네트워크가 없어도 누구든 창의적 아이디어를 통해 새로운 가치와 시장을 만들어낼 수 있습니다. As part of its efforts to realize a creative economy, the Pike administration has set up a financial aid system for startup and venture firms and is creating an overseas network to help these companies expand into the global market. A state-run creative economy town website was established in September as a platform to help commercialize creative ideas that individuals have but weren't able to make a business out of due to a lack of money or know-how. More than 3,800 ideas have been proposed on this website since its creation. President Peck has vowed to now create a so-called offline creative economy town nationwide that will contain the different resources and strategies of each region and provide local residents with tailored government support. The president also put an emphasis on finance as the key to connect such efforts into real business. 금융업의 경쟁력을 높이고 금융 지원을 강화해서 창조 경제의 시드 머니가 넘치도록 만들 것입니다. Tearing down red tape that gets in the way of creativity, innovation and convergence was another of the president's pledges. The government plans to launch a private and public joint bureau on the creative economy this month that will be composed of related ministries, SMEs, venture firms and conglomerates to more effectively devise measures that are essential in the field. Oh Jun Ju, Arirang News. Now, Korea Central Bank has left its key interest rate unchanged at 2.5% for the seventh straight month in December. The Bank of Korea's decision, which was widely expected, was made at its monthly monetary policy meeting on this Thursday. The central bank expects the economy at home and abroad to stay on a path to moderate recovery, but cited the U.S. Federal Reserve's planned tapering of its bond buying stimulus program as a lingering uncertainty for the global economy. The Korean economy grew 1.1 percent in the third quarter of this year from the previous quarter when it gained at the same pace. The economy's quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth remained below 1 percent for more than two years until earlier this year. Meanwhile, Korea's oil products have been selling well overseas this year. Oil refining industries and the Korea Petroleum Association say the nation's oil product exports are expected to exceed 50 billion U.S. dollars this year for the second consecutive year. Now, Korea ex exported $49.2 billion worth of petroleum products from January to November, accounting for 9.6 percent for the country's entire exports. Now, that is lower than the more than 10 percent recorded during the same period in 2012. Last year, oil products were the country's top export item, while this year, semiconductors sold better, pushing oil products into second place. And taking a brief look at how the local stock market is doing at this hour, Seoul shares fell to their lowest level in three months earlier this Thursday after a budget deal in Washington was viewed as paving the way for an early cut in monetary stimulus by the Federal Reserve, which unnerved investors. As of 1.30 p.m. Korea time, the benchmark Kospi was down three-tenths of a percent at 1963 after touching an intraday low of 1959, which is the lowest since September 6th. The tech of Ecosdeg was trading flat, while on the foreign exchange counter, the Korean currency was trading weaker against the greenback at roughly 1,053 won. And another setback for Samsung in its global patent war with Apple. Now, on Thursday, Seoul Court said that some iPhone and iPad features do not infringe on the Korean tech giant's patents. The Seoul Central District Court ruled that Apple did not infringe on three Samsung patents related to text messaging. The court added that two of Samsung's patents lacked originality and one was not used in the iPad models in question. The Korean tech giant sued Apple in March 2012 for using three of its technologies and requested a ban on sales of six iPhones and iPad models. And last year, the same court sided with Samsung, saying Apple had infringed on the Korean firm's 3G technology-related patents. Meanwhile, the nation's rail services are again feeling the strain on this fourth day of a walkabout by members of the Railway Workers' Union. Now, more than a third of unionized rail workers are now taking part, and the number is growing by the day. Kim Hyun-bin reports. 
freight train services are the worst affected by this week's industrial action, running at just 37 percent of normal levels. Express train services have also been hit. But the nation's high-speed KTX bullet trains continue to operate as normal. The government is urging the thousands of rail workers who have downed tools to return to work as soon as possible. This strike goes against government policy. It's not justified and doesn't have a practical interest. People need to get back to work before it's too late. Around one-third of Core Rail's workers remain on strike. A little over 600 have returned to their roles since the strike started Monday. Nearly 8,000 workers have gone on strike, and the vast majority, over 6,700, have been removed from their posts, and around 90 have been shown the door permanently. The union launched a strike on Monday in protest of Corel's plan to establish an affiliate for a new bullet train line. It thinks the plan would eventually lead to the privatization of Corel, mass job losses, and fair hikes. In a separate incident, a freight train partially derailed in the southeast of the country early Thursday morning. No one was hurt, and the transport ministry has concluded the incident was caused by damage to a wheel. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. All of the day's important events, events close to home, around the world. The arts and culture scene and the heart of global business. Arirang News has your whole day covered. The legislature will convene a plenary session this Wednesday. The United States says it is considering all options, including sanctions for Ukraine, for again using force on demonstrators in a crackdown on Wednesday. The protesters who continue to fill the capital city's Independence Square to demand the president's resignation have turned down his request for talks to defuse the crisis. Kim min has the latest. The United States is evaluating all its options, including sanctions against Ukraine, where anti-government protests continue to cripple the nation. All policy options, uh, including sanctions, are on the table uh, in our view, uh, but obviously that still is being uh, evaluated. The response follows a violent overnight crackdown in which riot police tried to clear protesters off the streets of Kiev. Police moved in on the main protest camp in the city's Independence Square, removing barricades and tents. Scuffles and clashes were reported as demonstrators formed human walls to resist the push. The police pulled away hours later and protesters rebuilt barricades and set up new tents. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry condemned the crackdown and expressed his disgust at the authorities' decision to, quote, meet the peaceful protest with riot police bulldozers and buttons, rather than with respect for democratic rights and human dignity. On the same day, Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych invited representatives of all political forces, priests and public figures to hold talks on resolving the national crisis. Yanukovych called on the opposition not to follow the path of confrontation and ultimatums in a statement published on the presidential website. But opposition leaders rejected the offer, saying they will not sit down for talks until the president accepts their demands that he and the government resign and that he release those that were arrested during the protests. The protests were sparked by the government's last-minute decision last month to suspend plans to sign an integration pact with the European Union and instead forge closer ties with Russia. In a related development, a delegation of Ukrainian officials will hold talks in Brussels Thursday on implementing a trade deal with the EU. Kim min Arirang News. Now, at a hearing on the deadly crash of an Asian Airlines passenger jet at San Francisco International Airport in July, U.S. investigators said the pilot was worried about his ability to land. They also said the plane was coming in too slow and too low as it made its final approach. Three people were killed and more than 180 injured in that crash. Arirang News, Ji Gil has this report. The trainee pilot of the Asian Airlines Boeing 777 that crashed in San Francisco told investigators that he was very concerned about landing without assistance from the runway's navigation aid system. According to information released by the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board, the pilot said he was stressed about the approach and thought the autothrottle was working when the plane was flying too slow and too low. 
About 11 seconds prior to impact, an audible alert consistent with the low airspeed caution was recorded. But the action was too late, and the main gear and underside of the aft fuselage struck the seawall. The airport's navigation aid was out of service due to construction, although a visual lighting system was operational at the time of the crash. Captain Yi gang who had a lot of experience in Boeing 747s but was transitioning to a Boeing 777, might have inadvertently disabled a speed control system, according to NTSB documents. The hearing focused on whether the pilot's over-reliance on the autopilot system had degraded his human flying skills and increased the risk of accidents. The automated cockpit system is also seen as key to the probe. Some crew members told investigators the auto thrust that controls the aircraft power was always engaged, but the safety board said it was not engaged when it approached the runway. Kim young Arirang News. Now, on a different note, it's at that time of the year here in Korea where parents are scrambling to register their kids at local public kindergartens for the next school year. Now, you might expect it to be a relatively hassle-free process, but think again, as a severe lack of spaces makes it a stressful time for parents. Connie Lee explains. It's one crowded room. Breaths are being held, hands are clasped, and some prayers are being said. These are moms, dads, grandparents, and neighbors who are hoping their numbers get called out. It's a random lucky drawing of 50 spots for this one public kindergarten in Seoul. But the number of people vying for them, nearly 600. There's cheering and clapping for the lucky ones. And also tears. Tears of joy. Feels like a dream. I didn't expect it, but they said my number, 83. I just couldn't believe it. I screamed. This feels better than when my daughter got into college. But I do feel bad for those parents who didn't get their numbers called. I see how stressed they are. Stressed and disappointed for those parents going home empty-handed from this drawing. I didn't get it last year, and it happened again this year. I didn't even get selected to be on the waiting list. I'm very upset. With a shortage of kindergartens in the nation, especially in Seoul, it's a battle for parents just to get their child into one. In the capital city, there are more than 244,000 children who are eligible to enroll. But the space is available, less than 10,000. In Korea, children ages 3 to 5 can enroll in private or public kindergartens, or those funded by local or state governments. And public kindergartens, because of their little to no tuition costs, are a favorite choice among parents. Public kindergartens like ours are in high demand. But because a lot of kids do get cut, there is uproar from parents who say that more public kindergartens are needed. But from the government's point of view, getting a child into a kindergarten really shouldn't be that competitive. The government has stepped up efforts to standardize the education system at public child care facilities with those of kindergartens. So parents shouldn't just depend on kindergartens, but also look into other child care facilities for their kids' education. Connie Lee, Arirang News. And now it's time for our daily arts and culture segment with our Lee Ho, And today, he will be bringing us up to date on all of the latest entertainment news. Good afternoon to you, Ho. Good afternoon. So I hear our Korea's most famous and popular gentleman is making headlines once again. That's right. Now, everybody's favorite gentleman, Sai, is back in the news, making headlines once again. And no, not for any type of Gangnam styling. But as the media reflects on 2013 and counts down the year, we can truly see that this was a year of size gentlemen. Many believe that it couldn't be done, that nothing could follow up the sensation that was Gangnam style and that it was destined to be another one-hit wonder like the Macarena. But then on April 12th, a gentleman was unleashed. The song was size 19 single and a follow-up to his international hit, Gangnam style. And the reaction? 
Well, it went on to become the most viewed video in a single 24-hour period on YouTube, crushing the nearest competitor by 8 million with a whopping 38 million views. It also happens to currently hold the day of debut record with 18.5 million views. And the icing on the cake? Gentlemen Hips weighed its way into YouTube history as the fastest video to reach 100, 200, and 300 million views. And now as the year is slowly winding down, the honors are once again piling up. Time Magazine has sized Gentlemen as the number one viral video of the year, ahead of Yelvis's What Does a Fox Say at number two. And on YouTube's Rewind 2013, it is the most viewed music video, no, not the most viewed K-pop video, but the most viewed music video of the year at roughly 600 million views, beating out Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball, which is at roughly 400 million views. So, was it as successful as Gangnam Style? No. But will any one video ever be as successful as Gangnam Style? Well. With 1.8 billion views and counting for the tune that had the whole world galloping, that may be a tall order. But it's safe to say that it's finally clear that Psy is no one-hit wonder. Well, definitely, Psy is under the spotlight once again for his um, for his popularity of his music videos. That's correct. And uh, as the media continues to roll out its best of list for 2013, I think we can continue to see Psy in the news, uh, making headlines for all the honors for Gentlemen and, of course, Gangnam Style. And that's probably going to happen until he rolls out with his next uh, new single, which. I think it's rumored that it's going to happen next, early next year. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. so we'll be looking forward to that. But uh, there is another um, music realm that's under a festive mood. That's right. Now, as the year counts down, we draw closer and cl closer to the Grammy Awards, which are taking place next January. But before that, we roll out the list of nominees, who was nominated the most for what, and who has the most honors. The 56th Annual Grammy Awards are just around the corner at the end of next month, and the excitement for the music industry's top honors continue to build with the release of the list of nominees over the weekend. Rapper Jay-Z leads the field with nine nominations, but he was snubbed in the three major categories of record, song, and album of the year. In fact, he and other music industry superstars were edged out of the running by newcomers like Lord, Kendrick Lamar, and Macklemore, and Ryan Lewis. Still, Jay-Z did manage to sneak into the group as a producer of Kendrick Lamar's album Good Kid Mad City Record, which is up for Album of the Year. Speaking of which, Lamar faces some very stiff competition this year in that category. He's facing off against Sarah Bareilles, Daft Punk, Taylor Swift, and Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Now, one of the artists with the second most nominations this year is another music vet, and he made his long-awaited return to music this year with the album 2020 Experience. Justin Timberlake received seven nominations, but like Jay-Z, also failed to garner any nominations in the top three categories. Kendrick Lamar, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, and Pharrell Williams also received seven nominations apiece, making it a three-way tie for the honor of being the second most nominated artist. Newcomers Macklemore and Ryan Lewis are nominated in the Best New Artist category, along with rapper Kendrick Lamar, country music singer Casey Musgraves, and British artist Ed Sheeran and James Blake. But the rookie sensation from New Zealand, Lord, was left out of the Best New Artist competition. Instead, she's nominated for two awards that are considered far more prestigious, Record and Song of the Year. The 56th Annual Grammy Awards will be held on January 26th. You know, so definitely star-studded, no question about that. But of course, like every year, uh, the nominations do not come free of controversies. That's right. Now, every year with the Grammy nominees or any of the annual uh, top honors show, we see snubs as well as honors going to the right people. But for this year, Justin Timberlake, Justin Timberlake excuse me, uh, 2020 Experience album, which was long awaited and was one of the best-selling albums of the year, he wasn't up for or any of the top three major categories, no song, record, or album of the year nominations. So it's kind of a head scratcher with the snubs this year. Right, and we will be eagerly waiting for the results, final results to come out early next year, and I'm sure you will keep us updated on that. I definitely will. All right, thank you for today, Teho, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. All right.
And it is one snowy day here in Seoul, but here now is a look at the weather conditions in your neck of the woods. You are now up to date. I'll see you back here at 4 p.m. Korea time. See you then.